Hello there, welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons. This is a BTEC Applied Science, it's Unit 5 Chemistry, and we're going to be looking at isomers. So this is under the learning aim A2, and it's right up at the very beginning, part of the introduction. Now, if you haven't seen previous videos that look at the different types of formula, such as displayed, structural, and skeletal, then I do suggest you start there first, and you will find some links in the description below. So by the end of this video then, you are going to be able to recall and identify different types of isomerism. If you don't already subscribe, can I ask that you do? Your support is very much appreciated and please use the likes and comment features. So isomerism then. <clears throat> There's actually two subgroups to isomerism. There's structural isomerism and stereo isomerism. And then there are other subgroups. So there's three types of structural, chain, position, and functional group. And there are two types of stereoisomerism, geometric and optical. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through each one in turn. We're going to define them. And then we're going to look at some examples. First off then, definition for an isomer. An isomer is compounds that have the same molecular formula, in other words, the same number and type of atoms. However, they are arranged differently, and that gives the molecules different properties. Let's move across to structural isomerism then. So structural isomerism means they have the same molecular formula, but a different structural formula. Again, if you haven't seen previous video on structural formula, I suggest you do look at that. The three subgroups of structural formula then, we have chain isomerism. Now chain isomerism is when the molecules only differ by their arrangement of the carbon atoms in the base chain. And the two main examples here would be straight chain and branched. So if I pick a molecule, if I go for C5H12, now you might assume that that's just pentane and pentane would be one of the isomers. So we could have a five carbon straight chain. This would be a straight chain isomer, C5H12. And this would be a displayed formula that I'm drawing here. It is much quicker and easier to use skeletal. So I will do from now on. I'm going to use skeletal from now on. If you're not comfortable with skeletal, then we need to look at previous videos so that we are. So that's the skeletal of pentane and that's the displayed for pentane. The other isomer or a branched isomer would be 2-methyl butane. Or I could also have dimethyl propane. So these would be known as chain isomers. A position isomer. This is when the molecule dif differs by the position of the functional group. So we won't have functional group isomers of alkanes because alkanes is a very simple basic functional group where it's just carbons and hydrogens. We can, though, have position isomers of alkenes. For example, that's but1-ene. If I move that functional group to the middle, that's now but2-ene. So that's a functional, sorry, that's a position isomer. I could also have a position isomer of a haloalkane. That's 2-bromobutane. Or I could have 1-bromobutane. They too would be classed as position isomers of bromobutane. Functional group isomerism then, we have the same molecular formula this time, um, but the functional group is different. And these are quite rare. And we're going to look at two examples as cyclic alkanes and alkenes and aldehydes and ketones.
first example then, a cyclic alkane, if I draw cyclohexane, that is in fact C6H12. Or if I draw hexene, they are both C6H12. However, the one on the left is classed as a cyclic alkane and has similar chemical properties to alkanes. The one on the right is an alkene and it has similar properties or properties of alkenes. Less common then, and not necessarily covered too much in your BTEC spec, would be aldehydes and ketones. If I look at propanal, propanal looks like this. Propanone looks like this. So this is propanal and propanone. This is an aldehyde on the left, and this is a ketone on the right. That's actually a different functional group. But as I've said, you don't cover those in much detail in this unit. It's mostly your alkanes and your alkenes that you need to be concerned with. So back to the beginning then. So we've covered the three types of structural isomer. We now need to look at the stereo isomerism. Definition for a stereoisomer, they have the same structural formula, but different 3D arrangement in space. So notice how that's definitely a different definition to your um, structural isomer. Your structural isomer had different structural formula and same molecular formula. This time for a stereoisomer, they do have the same molecular formula. They do have the same structural formula, but it's a different arrangement in 3D space. Two types of stereoisomerism then. We've got geometric isomerism, sometimes called EZ, and this occurs in our alkenes due to the restricted rotation around a double bond. That means that double bond locks the groups in place and they can't, there's no free rotation, that bond can't rotate. Let's have a look at some examples then. So I'm going to draw my carbon carbon double bond here. I'll draw a carbon carbon double bond on the right. We've got a CH3, and I'm going to put a H, and then on this side I'll put a H, and again I'll put a CH3. So, in order to have stereoisomerism, each carbon in the double bond must have two different groups on each carbon. So, this has a CH3, and this is a H. These two groups are definitely different. And again, on the right hand side, we must have two different groups, which we do. We have CH3 and H, they are different groups. So what I can do is if I change the position of those groups, or just one of them, let me see. We've now got a different arrangement in space. So in this case, the CH3 groups are on opposite sides of the double bond. And on the left hand side, those CH3 groups from the same side. Now I have done a video on or detailing the EZ isomerism so again I suggest you watch that first because this is just a real quick overview of geometric isomerism. I do go into detail and we do use the rules of assigning priority so I do suggest you watch that video at some point and you'll see in detail how we identify and name those geometric isomers. Okay, the final type of stereoisomer is the optical isomers. <clears throat> and this is identified or defined as non-superimposable mirror images of each other. And they most commonly occur when a carbon atom has four different groups attached. And we call this a chiral carbon or an asymmetric carbon. Now, I don't believe this is covered in much detail at all in this spec, but I will cover it. This is more of an A-level thing. So I'm going to have four different groups attached to a carbon, and I'm just going to make them up. I'll say I'll have a CH3, we'll have a H, we'll have an OH, and maybe we'll put a chlorine there. So that's four different groups attached to this carbon 
this carbon is identified as a chiral carbon. So what I do is I draw it 3D and we know using the dash and the wedge that the 3D structure, I draw two usual or straight lines to show they're in plane with the page. I then draw a wedge to show coming out the page and I show a dash going into the page. Now I've randomly assigned these four groups. I didn't have to put them in a specific place. I can just put them anywhere randomly. Now the difficult part comes to draw the mirror image. So I need to draw a reflection of this molecule. Notice how on the left, the straight lines or the ones in plane are going straight up. I have to draw a reflection. Now the wedge is here, the solid wedge. That shows it's coming out of the page. My dash shows it going in the page. And I just draw the reflection of that molecule. They are now non-superimposable mirror images and classed as optical isomers. I don't think you will need that level of detail. I've not seen that asked in any past exam questions. I would focus on the EZ isomers of alkenes. So there's your big overview then. There's your overview of your different types of isomers. So I do suggest you do follow that geometric in a little bit more detail in my other video. And I wouldn't worry or concern yourself with optical isomerism other than being aware it exists with a definition. I wouldn't worry about having to draw your different ones out on BTEC. Second year A-level, yes. BTEC, no. Hopefully you found that video useful then and thanks for watching.